You asked, I delivered. I am basically the Charlie Sheen of guitar content creators. I live to please, especially myself. But I am also in dire need of external validation, so here we go. A few months back I put out a little video called How to Record with the Spark 2. Three ways for your PC, phone and beyond. It's my most popular video so far. In the comment section it became abundantly clear that a few of you still hadn't figured out the next step. You'd mastered the audio, but you were still out there in the digital wilderness using your phone camera to capture your cinematic brilliance. The result of your videos sounded and looked like an early Coldplay demo recorded in a trash can. So I'm here to fix that. Based on popular demand, I'm giving you a step-by-step -step process I use to record my videos. All with my Spark Amp with OBS Studio on PC. It's my professional workflow demystified. First, let's talk about what you need. I'm going to try to speak slowly, which is very hard for me to do, so <laughs> try to keep up. Uh, obviously, you'll need a positive grid Spark Amp. Uh, I'm using the Spark 2 and I'm also using the Spark Edge. Uh, but the process is universal. Uh, go mini or live, it's all the same, just with varying degrees of awesomeness. Second, a PC or Mac. I'll be showing this whole process on Windows, but yeah, on Mac it's virtually identical. And finally, a webcam or camera that can run in webcam mode. And if you have a voice to narrate your videos you want to share with the world, a USB microphone. I'm using the Elgato Facecam Pro and the DJI Wireless Mic Mini. They're a bit pricey, so I'll drop some cheaper alternatives in the description below, uh, along with links to my gear. And if you're using a laptop, the built-in webcam can work in a pinch, but yeah, I'll warn you, the results are almost always poor quality. And positioning a laptop uh, to get a decent shot can be an exercise in futility. A quick note, if you want to record your singing vocals along with your guitar playing, if you've got a Spark Edge or Live, you can just uh, plug in a dynamic microphone straight into your amp. If you're stuck with one of the other models, you'll need a separate vocal microphone and audio interface. In that case, I'd recommend the Focusrite Scarlett and the Audio-Technica AT2020 microphone. Uh, you'll find the links in the description. So let's begin with step one, the Spark USB driver. If you're a Mac user, you can skip this whole part as the Spark amp will be automatically recognized as a USB audio device. For the rest of you, you need to download and install the Windows driver so your PC can correctly identify the amp as an audio input and output. The link is in the description. Once you've got it, install the driver and then do the unthinkable, restart your Windows computer and after it's back up, plug in your amp and go to settings, system and then sound. Your amp should now be listed as both an input and an output device. If it is, congratulations, you've passed the first test and you're not a total imbecile. And one more thing about the USB cable, the one that comes uh, with the Spark amp is USB-C to USB-C, and it's probably going to be too short uh, for many of you, and some might even need a USB-C to USB-A. So if you need a different one, don't just grab the first cable you see at a budget store, make sure it's at least a USB 3.2 Gen 1 cable, otherwise you have a chance that it won't work. Next we're going to use OBS Studio. It is the undisputed king of recording and streaming. It's open source, which means it's built by people who actually care, and it's cross-platform, so it works whether you're a Mac or PC loyalist. It's a complete powerhouse, allowing you to capture video from multiple sources like your webcam or desktop screen, all while simultaneously mixing your audio from your guitar amp and microphone. In short, it's the only tool you'll ever need to craft your visual symphonies. And it's the reason every serious creator uses it. It's easy to use, widely supported and it's free. You'll find the download link in the description. And once it's installed, open it and immediately go to settings and we'll do some initial setup. And before I forget, if you haven't already, uh, plug in and turn on your microphone and Spark Amp. In the video step, set your base and output resolutions. Base resolution is the size of your digital canvas, the maximum resolution of your workspace within OBS, think of it as your uh, master file, and the output resolution is the size of the final video that gets recorded. Uh, the perfect resolution you need to set depends on your camera and target platform. Uh, for YouTube you want a 16x9 canvas and if your camera can handle it, uh, set both to 4K which is 3840 uh, by 28, uh, 2160. If you're making a TikTok or Instagram reel uh, you need vertical video so then you use uh, 1080 by 1920. Now for frames per second, uh, set it to 30 fps. It gives us that cinematic look. Uh, 60 fps is for uh, video games and other juvenile pursuits. Now go to the output tab and under recording choose where you want to store your videos. Uh, set the recording quality to indistinguishable and the format to MKV. 
The video encoder should be hardware uh, H.264. This offloads the work from your CPU to your GPU. Uh, if your recordings later look like a broken PowerPoint presentation, your PC is probably not powerful enough. And then change the encoder to software with low CPU presets. And finally, enable audio track 1 and 2. We're going to separate your vocals and guitar tracks, so you can edit them independently in post-production. Next, head to the audio tab in settings and disable desktop audio sources, because we, we don't want any PC sound effects. Then set the mic auxiliary audio 1 to your microphone, and in my case, that's the DJI Mic Mini, and mic auxiliary audio 2 to Spark USB audio. If you have a separate audio interface for your vocal microphone, you'll also need to go back into the output settings and enable audio tra track 3. Then come back and set uh, the mic auxiliary audio 3 to that of your uh, audio interface. If you're done, click apply. Back on the main screen, find the audio mixer panel. Click the gear icon at the bottom and then check the boxes to assign the first mic to track 1 and the spark amp to track 2. Now add a gain filter to the Spark audio source. You do this by clicking the three dots under the channel name and then select filters and click the plus icon and select the gain filter. And set it to something like uh, plus 6 dB uh, because the Spark's uh, USB audio is a bit shy by default. And lastly, to bring it all together, let's create our scene. In the sources panel, click the plus icon and add a video capture device. Select your webcam and configure its settings. Uh, this will depend entirely on your specific camera, but you can usually adjust resolution, exposure and color right here. Uh, try to match the resolution and frame rates to the output resolution and FPS you configured earlier. And that's it, but before you start recording for real, let's validate our setup first. First, check the level in your mixer. Your voice should be in the green and when you play a chord, uh, your guitar should follow suit. Hit the record button and capture a quick 10 second clip. Now go find it in your output folder and see if the audio and video are in sync. If your face is mouthing, I told you so, while the sound arrives half a second later, you'll need to adjust the sync. Uh, go back into your audio mixer settings and play with the, de uh, the sync delay option uh, until everything lines up perfectly. And that's it, you're now ready to make content that doesn't sound like the driver interviews from F1 at Monza. And I know that's uh, oddly specific, but it was bad, like really, really bad. And lastly, a few parting words of wisdom. Lighting is everything. It separates the pros from the amateurs. Nobody wants to watch a video that looks like it was filmed in a dungeon. And now I'm going to turn off my lights just to show you the, the difference. Uh, I'll snap my fingers and bam. And again, and bam, see the difference? I thought so. So here's my full setup for an idea of what it takes to look this good. I'm using two uh, Ulanzi uh, video lights and four different uh, smaller fill lights. Also for editing, it's easier to record different sections of your video in separate takes. And finally, when you start recording, have something white in your shot. For me, that's my beautiful pearl white Telecaster. Um, but if you're not a man of exquisite taste, uh, just briefly hold a, a white piece of paper. It gives your video editor a reference point for white balance, which is the absolute beginner basic color correction step no one should skip. For editing, I'd suggest you use DaVinci Resolve. It's a professional grade editor used by Hollywood's elite, you know, uh, lefty snowflakes, as you silly Americans like to call them. And it's not a subscription service that bleeds you dry. It's a full featured suite from professional color grading to audio mixing, giving you all the tools uh, you need to turn your, foot, uh, your mediocre footage into a masterpiece. And best of all, uh, they let you download the full version for free. So there you have it, you came to me with a problem and I solved it. I've given you the knowledge to create videos that don't look or sound like Starship's We Built This City music video. Uh, if this helped, please like and subscribe, I really need your validation, and uh, it would be a shame for you to miss my next video. And don't you remember?